welcome back to Forest Audio. And, you know, we're here again. And, you know, I've gone through um, somewhat of a, de- of a development, excuse me, um, and the sort of things we're going to be talking about um, in the, the next stretch of things going into this uh, new year. Um, Beginning to the concept of time eventually. Um, fun fact. You ready? You're ready. October essentially means eight. And that makes sense, you know. Eight, octagon, October, oct. Why? Why, why, why did I say that? Because um, December, I, mean, I said December, uh, brain fart. October used to be the eighth month. So now the tenth month, that's because we added some. Um, there originally used to be ten months. Um, and there w- it wasn't that there was less time, obviously. You know, it's not like, you know, in the way we would count it, you know, we had less days. Or days were longer in a way because you know we were able to catalog time first because you know we could observe the pattern of oh the sun sets the sun rises it's dark the moon you know the sun moon sun moon sun moon oh look the moon kind of gets you know like it, the moon is kind of like loading sometimes it's like you know you know 10% moon next night 12% moon <laughs> and so on but um, originally um, we have a Roman calendar that's what we're operating off of and the Roman calendar had 10 months um, because uh, I think it was the emperor at the time he fancied the number 10 so he, he you know he split everything up into 10s you know his army the senate the months on the calendar and there'd be 10 months, but there'd be these 66 days that weren't anything, you know, they were just nothing. You know, like, just like, all right, let's, you know, let's get through the 66 days without shit falling apart so we can make it into the new year. They were just like unlucky days, you know, that's what they called them. Um, and the the date wasn't, you know, like, you would know the date, you know, it's not like, you know, like, everyone was waking up, oh, it's Monday, oh, it's Tuesday, uh, that, that came up a little further down the line, and uh, some of these things, they're named after planets, you know, eventually they'll be named after gods, Thor's day, um, I forget which planets are, are which day, um, but the, the day wasn't publicized, you know, like, you would know what day it was if, you know, there was a decree, like, you know, on Monday, the 19th of October, we will be paying all the troops. And the thing is, the troops were paid yearly. So, <laughs> sometimes, the people in charge of the calendar, if they didn't like who was running things politically in that area, they wouldn't pay the troops. And they would pay the troops on time whenever there was a ruler they liked. I guess I just wanted to get that bar off. It was a, it was a good way to kill four minutes. I you know, I you know this is something I learned. Um, but I, I guess uh, today's episode is um, essentially on you know you know the tough tough on crime. You know I went to uh, this panel at SEC. Um, and the the panel was on Attica. And Attica was this uh, this this prison uprising, where um, a lot of uh, you know how we treat prisoners today, you know, and the, you know the boundaries you know that we've set and you know the laws, um, they were created. You know, a lot of them stem from there on both sides. You know, like that's really like where you see the the rise and the, the tough on crime era. Um, and through that panel. Um, you know, I like sometimes I go to these things and people don't know 
they don't know what the they they say a bunch, but they don't know what could be the most important thing they thing they said. And you know the, the, the tire reprieve. You know you go through the statistics. You go through how you know you know the people who are make up the statistics are affected. And, you know so on. And you, you know say these you know uh, the, the person threw out a word. Um, she was like, yeah, you know, tough on crime policies are, um, she used the word bipartisan. Um, and you know, it was, a, you know, so I, I, you know, at the question section, you know, it finally came, you know, I was finally able to ask a question and I, I asked the question, um, what does it mean when about their definition of a cr- of crime you know like you go ahead and you say it's bipartisan you know you say republicans are working on it and democrats are willing to work with republicans on it and you know vice versa but what does it say about their definition of crime that's needed to be tough on like the sort of crime that they deem it necessary to have these, uh, you know, these military-like responses to, you know, like, you know, like grand larceny, you know, like robbery, you know, um, you know, muggings, you know, uh, drug dealing, you know, um, what does it say about this sort of definition of crime that's needed for this bipartisan approach? And it, you know, it's a little long-winded, and I, I worded it in such a way that I can't remember how I worded it, but I was wanting uh, the person to speak to. Um, the idea of what crime is in our, our current outlook, you know, like, you know, there's certain things like restorative justice, you know, there's uh, deterrence, you know, like we want to deter people from committing crimes, you know, like p- crime prevention. Um, but the sort of crime that, you know, we're preventing is, uh, you know, you find people like I remember I was talking to someone um um, and I forget uh, it was a police officer and they, they were saying something uh, related to, you know, like you go into the, our archives, you know, like you go into the archives from the 60s, you can see the same crimes being committed in the same neighborhoods. 60, 40, 20 years apart. Now, what in, not even to, you know, ask, you know, like, what is what is what does that say about our current climate on justice and our approach to dealing out justice and you know just in, justice and punishment obviously could mean something different you know and it must mean something different because we're going for a more punitive style of justice and even you know the definition of justice can you know, it could, you know, we could ask questions about it, you know, because I, I know from what I've heard from lectures and, you know, from reading and listening to uh, the Republic that, you know, at the start, you know, it was the question of, you know, when, when is, should, should justice be administered? Is justice administered for the powerful when vulnerable, for the vulnerable to set it forth a a contingent of principles that we must abide by, you know, what, what, what is justice? You know, and I, I think after a while, we stop trying to ask that question of what justice is. We can only really abide by what justice does. And if justice and the people who carry it out choose a punitive style over a style of enlightenment, you know, a style of honestly observing, you know, the, the, the thing I just said, if you're seeing the same crimes committed in the same neighborhoods for 60 years repeatedly, crime is not genetic, but it is, it, I mean, it definitely can be in the air. What does it say about that environment? That the same crimes are a necessity of life. So when I, when I say this, you know, like obviously on its face, if you know, we're, we're saying let's be tough on crime. Yeah, let's be tough on crime. Who are the criminals? Who, 
who? To quote the New Day, who? To quote Kofi Kingston, who? Who are the criminals? And I'm sure you could find a place of a person who is, you know, busting into cars in a hotel parking lot between the hours of 1 a.m. and 2 a.m. You know who you are. And you can also see the criminals on television. You can see the people who commit and get away with the sort of financial crimes that don't end life, but make life unlivable. Make life miserable. And there's like, there's this approach to language that I'm getting into where, you know, like a friend of mine, G.I. Joe, he said, just offhandedly, Words are spells. Words are spells. And, you know, that might sound a little too mystic for a lot of people, but, you know, that's just not mystic. That's realistic. Words are spells. You are what you say you are. You move towards the thing you create. You have a mindset of negativity. You are negative. You have a broke mindset. You are broken. Because it, it's a thought first. It's a thought. If, first and foremost, it's a thought first. And, you know, we can get into this theory of the imperfect circle where no matter how well you draw a circle on a board, the closer I look at it, the more problems I can find within it. So we have a class of criminal who can victimize the entire American population, right? The entire American population. And then beyond that class of criminal, you know, either it's in within that class of criminal or that class of criminal is, what is the word? Um, what is the, what is the word? Not not a betting, you know, but you know, uh, you know they're fi- you know they're fine with it, you know, it, you know they're uh, they they won't get in the way, you know. Fuck, what is the word? What is the word? Because I can't. They're they're enabling it. They're they're enabling a, a sort of class class of criminal. They're enabling a class of criminal to do what they do to our domestic population, to the global population. And I feel for my brothers and sisters. I feel for them all, domestically, internationally, globally. But there is specifically a class of criminal that looks to make life miserable. For anyone outside that class, and the thing is, this class of criminal, they need poor people. They, they, they need them. Just like rich people in America need socialism. They, 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 they rail against it. They say socialism is a handout. Let's pull the numbers up. In the last 97 relief packages, who got most, who got most of that money? Who got most of that money? And if you say it's the person on unemployment, if you're saying it's the person who collected their their stimulus checks, where the fuck did those people spend those stimulus checks? And I could plot a course of the economy, but dollars trend up. Money tends to pool. Only a, a sort of idiot makes it rain. The thing is, money money is liquid. You know, money is at at, at, it, at its best when liquid, right? So you have your you know your rich people who make it rain. You know, you have rich people.
that 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 sort of person who makes it rain has nothing on the person who understands that if you buy a boat you better own the ocean so i ask who who are the criminals and to the degree in which you are a criminal can you understand that you can be such a big criminal that those who should enforce the law will fall will falter in that duty can, can, can you understand about buying servitude sure we know where they dump toxic waste we won't drink that water sweatshops in Asia but they're good shoes okay 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 they're destroying entire mountainsides to develop phones it's a good phone though it thinks I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of this too I you know I you know if you can't make fun of yourself who can you make fun of We, we live in a world of hypocrisy and principle. It's, it's, it's interesting. But, yeah. Thank you for listening. Talk to you soon.